Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox recording here, and in this video, I'll be showing you how I recorded vocals that sound like this. Faster, faster. using a cheap $69 Behringer USB interface, all done within a tiny corner of my unfinished basement. Let's dive into it. Welcome to Frightbox Goes Gorilla, where we record pro-level results using basic utilitarian style tools within unexpected environments. And the tools we'll be using today is a $69 interface, and the environment is my unfinished basement. Now, if you've been into production and recording for any length of time, whether you're brand new or maybe you've been doing this for a while, I'm sure you've heard from plenty of people that in order to record professional sounding vocals, you need an expensive interface, high-end mic pre's, pro-level converters, and on top of everything else, they'll tell you that you need to record in a perfectly acoustically treated space or vocal booth. Well, I'm here to prove to you that this is complete baloney. None of this is true. Now there are people out there that have known this for a very long time, but still to this day, the large majority of people don't know this. And it's a shame because a lot of people out there are wasting their money and turning the recording process into a crazy science experiment. And it doesn't have to be this way. Now, right now I'm in the middle of producing an up and coming band called Raising Arizona. And in this video, we'll be tracking vocals for one of the songs that we're currently working on. So with that being said, let's get right to it. And I'm going to dive deep into the gear that I'm using and the space that I'll be recording these vocals in. All right, well, here we are. This is where today's vocal session will be taking place. First, let's talk about the actual space itself. This is just a corner of my unfinished basement and it is definitely not acoustically treated in any way. I've put zero dollars into acoustically treating this space. As a matter of fact, there is a good chance that your bedroom is probably a better place to record vocals than this basement. And that's it for the space itself. Let's talk about the computer and interface. So right here is my little makeshift uh, control room. The computer I'm using is a 2012 MacBook Pro. You do not need a crazy new computer to record and mix. I'm also using some cheapo PreSonus Aries monitors, which I think are great. And the interface is a Behringer Euphoria UMC 22. It's a $69 USB interface. And with that being said, it is not going to hold me back from tracking pro quality vocals. Now, the only other piece of gear that I'm using for this session is a condenser microphone for the actual vocalist. And today I'm using an Audio-Technica AT4033A. And aside from that, the only other thing I'm using is a beat up pair of old Audio-Technica headphones, which I've had for almost 20 years. They've seen better days, but they're still working. Now I have the microphone plugged directly into to the interface and I'm not using any external headphone amp. The headphones that she'll be using for monitoring are connected directly to the USB interface. All right, and that's the entire setup that I'm using for this vocal session. Extremely affordable. Any 15 year old kid can have this in their garage or bedroom or living room or whatever. So with that being said, let's jump into the actual recording. And then afterwards, I'm gonna dive deep into my DAW, solo some tracks and explain to you how I'm making these vocals sound so professional, even though I'm using a $69 interface. Let's track some vocals. I would say let's do let's do the first verse. We'll take everything up to the chorus. Okay.
All right, well, it has been a few days and I'm extremely happy with the way that the production is turning out so far, especially the vocal tracks. Now this band, Raising Arizona, is more of an alternative rock, indie rock kind of vibe. And for this production, I wanted a big, natural, ambient sound. And that's one thing I wanna bring up before I dive into the vocal tracks. A lot of times people think that because they're on a budget, they have to program everything and everything has to sound digital, it's not true. You can still produce and record in an old school style way, even if you're using modern day budget equipment. And right now I'm gonna share with you how I achieved that silky analog style vocal sound, even though again, I'm using a $69 interface and I've recorded the vocal tracks in my basement, my untreated basement. So the first technique that I would like to share with you and that I want you to absorb if you're interested in producing pro level vocal sounds in your home studio is to simply dead in your space. Now, the reason why I bring this up is I don't want you to think that this has to be overly complicated or that you have to drop a bunch of money on acoustic treatment. As you saw, I was recording in an untreated basement, but I do have a couch in my basement and a rug in my basement. Now, is my basement perfect? Definitely not. It is not perfectly dead. There are some subtle reflections, but guess what? This is rock and roll, and that small amount of reflection and extra noise is not gonna really affect the vocal performance and the vocal sound. This stuff is way overblown on the internet. Just remember to simply deaden your space with furniture, maybe a carpet. You could try recording your vocals in a closet that's you know stacked full of clothing. That's all you have to know is to record your vocals in a dead space, but do not overthink the deadening of that space. So the second thing I wanna share with you before we dive into the actual track itself is to always make the environment and the experience as comfortable as possible for the singer. So for example, when I record singers, I ask them if they want reverb. I always make sure that I have the levels right in their headphones while they're singing along to the track. Little things like this go a long way. Because remember, vocals are very, very personal. It's not like shredding on guitar or going crazy on a drum kit. Making sure that your vocalist is comfortable while tracking is one of the most valuable aspects of producing a pro level vocal track. It is often overlooked in home studios, but it is common practice, believe me, common practice in pro studios. So keep that in mind. Okay, so here's the big one. If you're looking to produce a pro level vocal mix, regardless of the gear that you're using, you must be using a solid vocal chain. Now, I don't care if you're using analog gear and a tape machine and a console, or if you're mixing completely in a DAW like I am using only plugins. You have to understand how to process a vocal sound in the same fashion and workflow that the pros use. So with that being said, let's take a quick listen to her vocal track. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna solo her vocal track and let's hear what her vocal sounds like completely dry. So in other words, what you're hearing is literally just the vocal mic plugged directly into my $69 USB interface. Always on the move, she's got no time to lose, you better let her go. She's a happy go lucky way, no matter the day. Now, you might be pretty surprised, especially when you listen to the mix I just played back. The vocal sounds very dark and pretty amateur. Here's what happens to so many home studio owners, including myself back in the day. We hear this in our home studio and we automatically assume after researching that we need a better preamp, a better microphone, a better interface, you name it. And I got news for you. You don't need any of that. You just need to understand how to process a vocal track. Now I used a $69 Behringer interface and there are all these myths online that you know state that cheaper gear sounds cheap and it's gonna be harsh. Here's the thing, cheap gear these days is 100% capable of capturing a ruler flat frequency response with very, very, very little noise. And I can tell you that almost all modern day interfaces sound exactly the same. The only real difference between a cheap interface and an expensive interface is build quality and features. The interface I used is bare bones. It's extremely limited as far as inputs. It doesn't have a built-in mixer, but it doesn't matter. It's still fully capable of capturing a solid source. It doesn't add anything to the sound and it doesn't take away anything 
from the sound. So because of that, I have to add all of that analog excitement and all of that processing in my DAW. And it's a lot easier than people think. So up first in the chain, I'm adding some console emulation. I'm also adding a tube preamp emulator. And I also wanna say this, don't worry about the plugins I'm using. The plugins I'm using are irrelevant. As long as you understand to add some form of analog emulation plugins, you're good to go. Don't overthink this process. I have a stock compressor that's catching some of her straight peaks while she's singing. Now here's a big one. EQ. You have to remember to cut frequencies from your vocal track. You're not gonna need anything really below 150 hertz or 100 hertz. There's gonna be a ton of lower mids that you can get rid of or reduce. And that's what I'm doing here. Just pulling out some lower mids, just a little, rolling off all the low end and notching out a few of the harsher frequencies in the upper mids and top end. Very straightforward. But as you can hear, this is the unequed sound. She goes faster, faster, faster than the speed of light and on this simple EQ plugin, which is nothing special, took a cloudy sounding vocal and turned it into a nice polished sounding vocal. Now after the EQ, I have even more compression. She goes faster, faster, faster than the speed. That's compressing the vocal by another 12 dB, some limiting. She goes faster, faster, faster than the speed. That's catching the extreme stray peaks after that second compressor. And then finally, last in my chain is a de -esser. So because I'm using a solid vocal chain that's controlling dynamics, carving out all the frequencies that I don't need, and also adding some analog warmth via the analog emulation plugins, I end up with a silky smooth vocal sound that sounds album ready. Now I also wanna bring up a bonus fourth point in this tutorial, and that is to track a vocalist that comes in prepared, and it also helps if they have a little bit of talent. Now I'm lucky the singer of this band, Sarah Dolan, is extremely talented and has an amazing voice. So if I'm being honest, this was a breeze. But even with that being said, even if you're working with maybe a mediocre vocalist, applying these principles to your source tracks will help exponentially when looking to achieve a pro level vocal sound within your recording. And it could be done with the cheapest gear on the market. The problem is that so many home studio owners have no idea where to even begin when it comes to producing album quality music within their studio. Take it from me, I wasted over a decade of my life buying gear I didn't need, chasing my tail, producing very amateur sounding results, and I don't want this for you. Now, because of this, I've put something together called my Polish Production Checklist. This checklist is a simple PDF guide that outlines my entire process for producing music from start to finish, and it's meant to give you insight so you could skip over all of the unnecessary mistakes that so many of us make and get right to producing pro level results with the gear that you already have. The Polish Production Checklist is absolutely free right now and you could have direct access by clicking the link below in this video's description. Now, if you find this content inspiring and if you've learned from this video and would like to learn more, there is a video linked above in the cards where you'll learn how I recorded album quality drum tracks within my dingy garage using some very inexpensive gear. So if you're looking to improve your drum recordings, check out that video. And until next time, drink that spin drift. <laughs>